Welcome back to the Fantasy Hockey Podcast. It's time to talk about one of the hottest players in the entire league at the moment, and that is Jakob Vrana. I feel like I've put off this video for so long because I've always looked at him and said, this is totally going to cool down, right? And so I've given it some time to simmer, and he just keeps ratcheting it up a notch every single time. And so that's it. I can't put it off any longer. It's time to talk about him. Oh, by the way, in case you didn't know, Vrana in Croatian means crow. More you know. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for future videos that we make, whether it's hot hands, bust watches, or week previews, all the good stuff that we do. Um, so first, as always, let's jump into deployment and take a look at where Vrana is playing. So it looks like Vrana is currently playing with Kuznetsov and Tom Wilson. He has been for a while now on that second line for Washington. And I mean, the good thing of that is he's either going to get one of Backstrom or Kuznetsov, depending on who kind of flips on that line. And look, also, he could also get TJ Oshie on his right wing, right? If Tom Wilson ends up moving up to the top line at some point eventually. But right now, the Caps are playing so well, I don't think they're really going to change anything up. As for the power play, he's playing on the second unit with Lars Eller, Tom Wilson, Alex Ovechkin, and Dmitry Orlov. Uh, not an awful second power play unit. I mean, you have Tom, you have Alex Ovechkin playing both. So when you have Ovechkin double shifting on the power play units, you're probably going to get some good power play points occasionally. Um, it's actually really surprising that they're doing that with Ovechkin. I can't remember a year prior where they've done this, where Ovechkin is double shifted, even on daily faceoff. So that's a good thing for Vrana. Um, but I still think that, that second power play unit doesn't get as much time as proven out by if we move over to the uh, actual in-season tool. You can see that Vrana is currently playing around 30% of the team's power play time on ice. That's not great. Uh, you'd usually like to see that higher. I mean, that's Team Meyer numbers, right? So it's like, it's one of those things where it's, it's not fantastic. But the problem with Vrana is that he's already a guy who's right now relying on some unsustainable numbers. And one place that you look at where you're saying, okay, well, maybe this can boost his numbers and can help him out is the power play. And the fact that it's only at 30% means there's, there is a ceiling to him, right? There's only so much that he can do from a sustainable perspective. And there's a few other things that limit him in that regard. There's this time on ice. He's only playing a around 14 minutes of average time on ice per game. And he's currently playing the same amount of average time on ice pretty much as last year. So there hasn't been an increase on time on ice. What has increased a ton is, of course, his points pace. Obviously, he's on a 72-point pace. Last year, was on a 47-point pace. This year, he's shooting at a 236-point pace versus last year's 161. That's a good thing. Now, that's a very, very, very good thing, because if you say, OK, let's say he continues to shoot at that pace rest of season, right? If he shot at that pace rest of season and his shooting percentage, which is right now at an unsustainable 20 percent, let's say that came down to 13 percent. You're looking at 30 goals. Let's say it came down to 14 percent, right? You're looking at 33 goals, 14, 15 percent, 33 goals, right? So that's that's kind of what we're seeing right now as expected with Jakob Vrana is around. If this shot pace continues, you're looking at around 30 goals, pretty much. That's what I would expect with him, but there are some red flags with that shot pace. That is normally very unsustainable when you're shooting this much with that low amount of ice time. And I've talked to Brandon extensively about this, and he agrees, um, and actually was the one who kind of brought it up at first, was I don't think that shot pace is sustainable with the minutes he's currently getting. And on top of that, normally you'd say, okay, well, if he's getting really, really heavy offensive deployment and he's starting most of his shifts in the offensive zone, then okay, sure, he can shoot that much because most of his minutes are in the offensive zone normally. But when you take a look at his offensive zone starts, they're actually down 13% from last year. Only 55% of his shifts start in the offensive zone, and that's including the power play and the penalty kill. And so he's playing way more time in the defensive zone and still shooting more. So you can the thing is that his shoot his shots are good it, shots are very good right now for him but the problem is that they're not really sustainable from the perspective of where are those shots coming from and why i don't think that's going to stay there i think this is going to come down and i think we may see more of like a 200 shot pace last year he was a 161 shot pace which was good for him and an 8.39 shots per 60 solid and last year his line mates weren't that different i'm I'm pretty sure he was still on. He, he was more of like a third line guy last year. Right now he's getting he's still getting third line minutes. But last year he was more of an actual third line guy. So he does have better line mates this year. But the thing with that is, of course, also his shooting percentage is ridiculously high. Uh, his shot pace is high. And when we take a look at his on ice shooting percentage, that's another thing that's really high. He's at 15.27 percent on the season. Last year he finished at just around 12 percent of on ice shooting percentage. That is not sustainable 
from a 15% standpoint. The 12 are actually was more of like an 11.4. So not really 12, 11.4% last year. 11% is way more sustainable than his current 15.3. I, I do not see him sustaining that 15.3. His IPP is actually right in line with last year at around 70%. So that's promising. That's good. I, I feel good about what he's doing. What really is high is his on ice shooting percentage, and that's going to come down a little bit. So I would expect his assists to be actually very similar to last year. I, I would expect his assists to fall somewhere in that 23 to 20 five range with an 11 let's say a high on ice shooting percentage fine cool he gets a let's assume high on ice shooting percentage sweet that's a little bit high so i would say that what you're looking at with verona is a 60 point ceiling guy and really the range is kind of big because a lot of it depends on his shooting his shooting percentage um and on top of that how what, what does that on ice shooting percentage end up doing and so to me verona is a 50 to 60 point guy that's what we're looking at now if you take a look at his actual threat levels on the ice so are they better with him on the ice the answer is actually a yes a resounding yes they are better when he's on the ice both on the offensive side and the defensive side of things so that should make you a little bit excited that perhaps perhaps we'll see more ice time for Jakob Vrana but I wouldn't hold my breath because quite frankly if you've already been playing this well you've already been doing this much and you haven't gotten more ice time it's not going to happen. And the problem with him is it's not so much that his play hinders his ability to get more ice time. It's just that he's not going to get more ice time because of the line that's above him. They're not going to take away ice time from the Ovechkin line. It's just not going to happen. And he's not going to take over Ovechkin's top left wing spot anytime soon. He's also not finding a way onto that top power play anytime soon. And so the problem with Vrana is there's a very hard ceiling. There's a hard cap. Because when you look at a guy like Jacob Vrana, he's a guy who you need a lot of levers to pull to raise that ceiling you need better minutes you need more power play deployment and that's pretty much about it you'd also like to see more offensive zone starts which he's not currently getting at the moment because he's pretty good defensively as we just saw he makes them better on the ice defensively so the problem with Jakob Vrana is is really that to me he's a very very solid streamer option not so much this week because the Caps actually have a terrible schedule they only have two games, and so I would actually avoid Vrana. This, of all the weeks to pick up Vrana and him exploding, this is actually the worst week for people to pick him up, given his schedule. But he is a fantastic streamer option that I think has some legs and continue to be a long-term streamer option. But, and there's a big caveat that that shooting is unsustainable from a minute standpoint. Maybe he continues to do it. Who knows? Maybe he'll defy those laws, right? But if that shooting comes down... And his shooting percentage also comes down. You're looking at a pretty hard slump in Vrana coming soon, if that happens. So all I would say with Vrana is pick him up as a solid streamer option, very solid streamer option at the moment, who's red hot, but be ready to drop. Be willing to drop him when the time comes. Don't hold on so dearly and hope for anything. He's not getting 40 goals, people. It's not happening. Unless Alex Ovechkin gets injured, he takes that top power play top line spot even then I don't know if he can hit 40 goals he needs to bring his shooting way up his minutes need to come way up and his power play deploy needs to come way up for him to even sniff 40 goals really you're looking like I said at a 50 to 60 point scorer if that's worth something to you then awesome but I would say it's going to be pretty streaky and the 50 could actually be maybe his ceiling 55 could be his ceiling if his shots come down so you've got to adjust and pay attention to his shooting as soon as his shooting starts to drop he immediately becomes far less valuable um, and because of that I, I gotta say he's a streamer option fantastic streamer option at the moment but be cautious pay attention and be ready to drop him quicker than anybody else uh, because I think that'll pay dividends for you if you're ready to move on instead of holding on to him hoping and having a dead roster spot later anyways hope you enjoyed that Vrana video let me know who you want to hear for hot hands next and I'll catch you next time